I hate people. I really fucking am starting to hate the state of America today. The level of ignorance, the level of white privileged racism, the level of white colonizer mentality is just been astounding in the last few days. Now, for those of you outside of the U.S. that don't know what the hell I'm talking about, let me break down a backstory for you. On Sunday, the U.S. basically shuts down, shut down, because on this particular day, we just shut down because we have a sporting event known as the Super Bowl, which is an American football championship, and, you know, it's celebrated essentially by horking down a bunch of food, getting fat, and watching a football game and then passing the fuck out later because you drank too much alcohol. That's essentially what Americans do on this day. Now, what happened was is that there was a beautiful halftime show, in my personal opinion and biased opinion, albeit, it was the greatest and it was the most beautiful halftime show I think that the Super Bowl has ever had. And you know, the fact that it took place in my native Northern California is, you know, just a little bit, you know, of the icing on the cake, really. But essentially because of the the symbolism that was behind the Beyonce performance, because Bruno Mars, Coldplay, and Beyonce played, and because of the... the the symbolism behind that, which I thought was actually very artistic and very beautiful and very historically done, it does not, first of all, I want to say, it does not represent any sort of revolutionary action. It, it's very bourgeois, reactionary, and stuff like that, and hypocritical, frankly. But from a, Marx, but from a Marxist perspective on where I'm getting at, I have to speak about this. Because the performance has been gaining criticism by a lot of individuals who basically have called it racist and people that have called it, uh, you know, saying that, you know, it was anti police and that all sorts of other nonsense about it. That is not the case. It's not being anti police so much as it's bringing the idea of police brutality to the forefront and bringing awareness to police brutality that's been going on in America. It's also, um, it was, and, and it's, and it's not being racist by any means. The people that are trying to claim that it's racist bring up the idea of the Black Panthers and basically trying to say, oh, well, black people killed, you know, mercilessly killed white people. And i been wondering where is the source for this? Where is the, the information to back that up? Because I could probably go to a million and one different sites and bring up information about the Black Panthers. And I can tell you from personal uh, research and from, speak, and from um, speaking with folks and with being uh, and just being a political activist, political, you know, studying political science since I was 16, you would think that I would know quite a lot about this, and I do. And the Black Panthers were a revolutionary Marxist organization, Marxist-Leninist-Maoist organization, that was also third worldist. They knew what was going on in the first world, and knew that they had, there was significant privilege that black people still had in the first world over the third world, but understood the fact that they were not privileged in America. And that's the thing that we need to understand here as well. And this is the thing that certain first world is like, um, um, like, fuck, what's her name? Kim Tastic, that they don't understand. It's not that we're saying that black people are privileged. We're saying that they're in the first world, they have it significantly better than, say, the people in Zimbabwe or the people in Ghana, because those are third world countries that are exploited by U.S. imperialism or Western imperialism as it is, 
and things are significantly worse for them in those countries. But that does not take away from what goes on in the first world, like America, where black people are significantly oppressed by the white privilege that exists in America. I hope that kind of makes sense to people because that's exactly what this is. It's basically saying that, yes, white people have privilege in America. It's that white supremacist, white colonizer sort of bullshit that's existed since the, since the inception, since the settlement of this land by white colonizers. But what I was getting at and what Jason Unruh was getting at was that black people are uh, are significantly more oppressed in African nations and in third world nations. But getting back onto the subject of, uh, of the first world, like I said, black people in the first world are still significantly, you know, oppressed below white people. And and all this that I was talking about that I got into, this is what Huey Newton and Bobby Seale understood. This is why they were third worldists. This is why they supported the idea of breaking down the class struggle and why they believed in a world revolution. But they also believed in trying to create that revolution in America because they believed that they needed to end class struggle in order to end the race struggle and that was their primary objective they wanted equal rights for African Americans sounds like a pretty good deal right I mean equal rights for African Americans equal rights for everybody essentially being able to have integration not segregation you know some of these things that some of these concessions that were given you know in the mid to late 60s but still underlying issues in America still exist today and essentially this was an organization that believed in racial equality amongst you know amongst everybody they believed in equality for everybody but primarily they were trying but in order to do this you need to have the racial equality for African Americans and that's essentially what they were fighting for it was about black empowerment. Yes, there were elements of black nationalism, but the primary objective to that was to essentially achieve that goal objective of, achieve, of, of achieving this state of uh, empowerment and nationalism to... The, the nationalism was built to, in, was built to empower black people. And, in order, and then from there, it was supposed to start this movement in which black people could, you know, would fight for their right, basically, to be treated as equals. And that is essentially what the Black Panther movement was about. That was what Huey Newton was about. That was what Bobby Seale was about. That was, you know, and some of the people that, you know, were involved in that movement, uh, like uh, um, uh, Anshanta Shakur. And what people don't understand is that people are trying to call that racist and I find that tremendously insulting as an individual who is first of all who is pasty faced and a, who is a political activist as well as a person who studies political science I find that extremely offensive and insulting considering that you're saying that basically trying to achieve racial equality is racist I cannot, I cannot fathom the idiocy, the hypocrisy, and just the level of ignorance and white privilege that that statement essentially brings. Now, if we were talking about the new Black Panthers, I could fully understand what you're talking about, because there is a difference between the Black Panthers and the new Black Panthers. I will provide that link to that video below. But there is a significant difference. The Black Panthers were revolutionary. They were racially equalists. They were racial egalitarians, really. Whereas the new Black Panthers are xenophobic, anti-Semitic, racist, and militant, and I'll be honest, 
they are they are racist they they are racist they are fascist but that is the new black panthers not the old black panthers not the one that beyonce and her crew were basically speaking of the symbolism that they brought about and those jackets that they were wearing were the jackets that michael jackson uh, was the jacket that Michael Jackson wore during like the 1993 Super Bowl or something like that when he performed the halftime show so yeah and then the other argument that I get from people was saying was trying to say that this symbol right here is racist because they're trying to equate it to the Black Panther movement the, again as I've already explained there's nothing racist about the Black the old guard Black Panthers and this symbol right here um, this symbol actually was the was first became part of the revolutionary movement during I believe the 1920s 1930s by the German Communist Party the German Communist Party was by the way don't try to equate that to the German Nazi Party because the two had nothing were completely separate they were not they were they were not ideologically they were ideologically different in fact the German Communist Party was banned by the Nazi Party because they actually were a revolutionary group that want that fought against the Nazis during World War two they were an underground movement that basically wanted communism in Germany and anyway but this symbol right here was first adopted by the workers, peasants, by essentially the proletariat during the 1920s and 1930s. During the, 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 during the inception of the Black Panthers, Huey Newton and Bobby Seale, being revolutionaries themselves, adopted this as their symbol for, you know, for essentially for the black empowerment movement and for their movement in general. So that became the symbol for for it. They essentially adopted an old symbol from the revolutionary movement of the past. That is essentially the history behind it. And so the fact that people are actually saying that this is racist, I don't understand that because obviously you don't understand. I mean, essentially this whole argument of people trying to claim that the performance and all this was racist and stuff like that is completely stupid because by saying that you're showing your white privilege you're showing your racism you're showing your ignorance and as well as you, the fact that you show a complete lack of knowledge of the history of it and a complete lack of knowledge on the politics of it but then again that's why I make these videos I make these videos to educate people on what essentially this shit is. So, basically trying to close it up and summarize. The Black Panther movement, not racist. The new Black Panther movement, racist and fascist. The Black Panthers, revolutionary. The new Black Panthers, reactionary. And to those that are also trying to compare the Black Panthers to the KKK, again, you're kind of stupid. Now, if we were talking about the new Black Panthers, then yes, I can understand the correlation. But the old Black Panthers? No. Now, can we move on, please? I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. Peace.